the themes every month. Tina and other uh, chapter members invite people to give a, a talk about a one word, you know, it's one word, talk about it. So in this case, transparency. Um, what, what Tina doesn't know is, um, I've done this once before. It, it was in grade six. It was the first time doing any public speaking. And uh, I got up there and it was my introduction to public speaking and I was terrified. And like my lips were moving and I had no idea what was coming out of my mouth. And, uh, and then I just kind of like clammed up and like walked off. Didn't even, didn't even finish my talk. And so uh, this is kind of like going deep in the recesses of my mind and that is the dragon I need to slay here today. So, so a, uh, as some background, uh, a one word talk. All right, so here you go. Here, here is, here's a word. Let's talk about it. And so um, that set me off on a, a, on a bit of a journey, okay? Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to uh, do this exactly. And so, um, you know, having learned a couple things from grade six, uh, I took this on like any good creative effort. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you all, but when I'm solving a problem, something creative, I like to add some constraints. Okay, so I started thinking about, well, what, what constraints can I apply to this a talk on, on transparency? I started thinking about uh, definition. And there's kind of, you look it up in the dictionary, there's like two paths. Uh, I, I will date myself with one of them. Like in high school, we had these overhead projectors and teachers would like write on these little plastic things called transparencies. And that's literally like one half of the definition of transparency. And uh, I thought about giving you 20, 30 or minutes on that and uh, skipped it. Uh, so, so, so door number two is about uh, clarity and straightforwardness, okay? And uh, these are subjects kind of near and, near and dear to my heart because, um, uh, well, I believe if you're going to create something, a good place to start is to, to write what you know, right? So if you're writing a book, you're writing your first book, like, it should be like semi-autobiographical even if you don't want to point that out to people, just to write what you know so that the best quality content. And so uh, Tina touched on my story. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so FreshBooks, it's this ridiculously easy to use invoicing and accounting software in the cloud. It's designed specifically for self-employed professionals and their teams. Uh, over 10 million people have used it since we started, but the, be the beginnings were very, very humble. Um, we, um, uh, I, I was using Word and Excel, accidentally saved over it. Ended up moving into my parents' basement for three and a half years. Okay, trying to get this thing off the ground. It was a side project, like many great creative things. This was a side project. Gradually, I had my agency uh, turned into the full-time business, grew it up. We're over 250 people now. Uh, again, over 10 million people uh, have used it since we started. We actually uh, just totally redesigned it um, uh, in September, launched that after 10 years. So if you haven't checked it out in a while, please please do. But um, what's, the, what's the point of all that? Um, point of all that is, um, been building a company, been building a product, and uh, along the way found myself getting very passionate about creating companies. Like I was, you know, a designer and a builder, and uh, you know, I, I, I have come to believe the following: that entrepreneurs are artists, and the canvas is the business. Okay, and so what I mean by that is, uh, I think it's easy to say, hey, like business people aren't creative or whatever it is. And so I see it totally different. I see uh, building a company as a, uh, as a hard and challenging problem. And there's many things along the way you need to do. Uh, I'll get this back to transparency, I promise. Uh, um, you know, while, while, you're, while you're doing that. And, um, and so uh, crafting a culture is something I've developed a lot of passion around. Okay, and so I want to talk to you a bit about that, and it's actually something I know a little about. Uh, as Tina mentioned, I'm coming from Toronto. Uh, that's actually uh, up in Canada. We were recognized as the, the best company to work for under 1,000 employees last year. Um, Google was number one for over 1,000 employees, and so, you know, pr pretty decent accomplishment. This was determined by our, you know, our, our employees. And, uh, and so, the um, point is I care about this stuff. I, I've learned some things along the way. What I want to share with you are, um, are a bunch of hacks. I'm going to call them kind of hacks, okay? And uh, you know, I, I would have you think about these things. Uh, these are things that we have done to create transparency, you know, in our business. It turns out like transparency is uh, important uh, for, for a variety of reasons in, in a company, and I think just in life. But in a company, I think transparency creates trust. You know, 
trust creates speed, and, and speed makes the world go around, right? Uh, we'll talk a little more about that in a second. Um, anyway, so I've learned some things about transparency, and uh, I was asked to actually give a talk about scaling our culture from zero to 250 people at that thing when I got the award. And uh, I found like so many of the things in that talk were actually just back to like efforts we have taken to create transparency. Now, this talk is totally different than that one, net new, never seen before, uh, and not really related, but it, it struck me that at the heart of building companies and culture, transparency is a huge thing. Uh, so, so I want to talk about it because I, I have energy for it. Um, now, let us uh, contemplate for a second, like why does this matter? Why is this so important? I think it's important to talk about a world without transparency to appreciate a world with it. Um, I think of um, transparency is, is uh, you know, it's one of those things you notice really quickly if you don't have it. And in the absence of transparency, things like misunderstanding start to come in, right? Uh, I'd say false perception. And you might say those are solved with communication but I don't believe that. I actually believe you can talk a lot and communicate very little, not be clear and straightforward, not be transparent, and just kind of flap your gums. And so, you know, if you use the example of like, I don't know, maybe you're, you're due to meet somebody at a coffee shop, right, and, and they don't show up. I don't know about you, if there's no message or anything like that, I get mad, right? Like, a little just mad inside. It's like all of a sudden, like, ugh, I'm angry. This is so, like, kind of disrespectful. It's kind of gnawing away at me. Uh, and, you know, if you get a note like, hey, sorry, I can't make it, right? Well, maybe it was like a really important meeting. You've been trying to get together for a long time. It's like, fine, that's still super frustrating, right? So that's like one degree of information. But if you actually were to find out that, you know, the person you're meeting, their loved one's best friend had just been killed in a car accident and they couldn't even pick up their phone to tell you they're coming, if you had that information, if you had that transparency, you'd be, probably be a lot more uh, understanding, okay? So just a small example of how, uh, you know, not having information, not having transparency can create, um, you know, difficulties, false perception. As one guy at work, uh, uh, he uh, at FreshBooks, he, he likes to say like, you know, he thinks of false perception as like shit covered glasses, right? Like, or shit tinted glasses. And like, if you're like mad about something, right? And it's bothering you, like everywhere you look, it's like, it, you know, it, it's not so good. And so instead of having like a really transparent background, like the, the image here is saying like, hey, like transparency is great, but like there can be something that's like clouding your view too, and that's not so good. So transparency matters because you, you actually want to see the mountain range that's in the back there because it, it's beautiful and, and awesome. Um, okay, so uh, that's kind of like, you know, I think some of the, the reasons kind of why it, why it matters. And, you know, the benefits when you have it are you go fast. Life is like too short to be going around mad and, and like with false perceptions or misunderstandings. And so uh, for all these reasons, transparency matters. I think at the, the heart of transparency is about relationships. This can come back to like some of the hacks I get into. It's like it's one thing to maintain a relationship with... Uh, you know, I, I think it's all kinds of relationships these days. It's like with loved ones, it's with clients, it's with coworkers, right? So it's about creating transparency around you. Um, that's the, the, the relationships part. And, uh, and final point before I get into things, it's a process, okay? It is not a state. It is a process, an ongoing process. Uh, you, you're always working on transparency. It could be with like uh, a, a loved one, right? Like maybe it's like you're like so in love with somebody and uh, you see them a whole bunch, right? And you're so on the same page and then you don't talk for like two weeks because somebody goes traveling and you know, the closeness starts to deteriorate and then they don't call you or they're late to call one time. Again, you're upset and you're like, oh my God, my world is ending. Uh, you, you actually have to keep spending the time to like stay on that same page and feel good. All right, so that's just conceptually what a bunch of stuff around transparency is about. Now what I wanted to do is, is get into some of the hacks, all right? So these are, um, these are things we have done over the years at FreshBooks to create a transparent uh, workplace. I think it's part of the reason we were you know, a top employer. I, I'm sharing these with you. I don't know if they're always gonna be directly applicable. What I'm hopeful they will do is they will uh, inspire you to maybe create a little more transparency in your lives uh, and, and show you how even things that, you know, like even like a business is a creative thing and there are ways to achieve things through, through hacks. So uh, that's what I got. Let's get into things. Um, I figured I would start this talk by telling you exactly how we got it all wrong to begin with. 
Okay? So what better way to uh, show uh, a lack of transparency than, than compare and contrast? And so, um, folks, the year was 2004, so this was actually a, a pretty good web page back then. Uh, but uh, so, so try not to dissect it too much, and, and uh, there's lots of, lots of cheesy things going on in there. But uh, this, this is where we started at. When we launched the company, uh, we actually had a different name. It wasn't called FreshBooks, it was called Second Sight. And uh, it was a side project, and we were working out of my parents' basement, and uh, my co-founders were wonderful, upstanding people. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, I guess I'll say I. I was very concerned with, and the internet was a different place back then, very concerned with projecting a, a larger image than, uh, you know, we actually were. So, so folks had, like, you know, we're managing financial information. Like, this is something, it's a big deal. It's, I take it very seriously, high level of responsibility. And so I was like, well, we need to create, like, a brand or an image that is, um, can be trusted, right? And so you can't see it as well because of, of, of the kind of, uh, the, the colors are sort of away from here, but like it was all like navy blue and gray, like, like a bank, right? These are like bank colors, right? And we had like pumped up titles and uh, like on the website when you get to the team thing and, and all this kind of thing. Uh, we were trying to make it seem like there were hundreds of people like, you know, behind the internet, like working away if you're using our product. And, um, uh, and so the day I realized that we had kind of lost our way on the, the, the transparency front was um, FreshBooks to this day and was true in Second Sight days, crazy about customer service, okay? Just crazy, crazy about customer service. And uh, so we answered a lot of phone calls and email. And, uh, you know, my co-founder, Levi, uh, wonderful human being, put my life in his hands, drop of a hat. Um, he actually, because we wanted to create this bigger image, it was like, well, you know, you can't have one of the management team replying to emails or you're like a small company. So he created like a fake name, alias, pseudonym or whatever it was, this character, Jeff Francis, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and he used to reply to like a lot of emails to, to customers and things like that under, under this uh, Jeff Francis handle. Uh, listen, I don't know how we got there, you know, <laughs> bad idea. But, but suffice to say like one day sitting in the after office afternoon and the phone rang. And uh, Levi picked up, like, you know, good afternoon, second sight, Levi speaking. And, uh, you know, sure enough, uh, the inevitable words came. Hi, I'd like to speak with Jeff Francis, please. <laughs> Levi puts the person on hold. <laughs> Collects himself for a second. Hello, <laughs> Jeff Francis speaking. All right, uh, this, this is the day I knew he had strayed. You know, this was, we, I, I, I don't know why. It was a different time, folks. It was just, it was bad. We got rolling down the wrong uh, thing. And so uh, around this time, uh, we were good enough to have an advisor who was like, listen, uh, you all have a terrible company name. Uh, I won't itemize all the ways it was awful. Uh, but, but we choose to rename the company, and we kind of rebranded and, and made things a little lighter and brighter and, um, uh, and used it as an opportunity to say, you know what, like, we're working in like shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, and so let's just tell people that and they can be into it or not as they see fit. And so put our photos up on the website and everybody's up there to this day. So we're 250 plus people, photos on the website, just kind of like, you know, let's just, let's just stop the facade and, and be uh, transparent. So, um, and that's worked well. So I think, uh, what, what can you take away from, from this story? Uh, I think it's like, you know, be yourself, right? Like, no need to create the facade, even, even in business or, you know, if it works like that. Okay. So, um, next story. Uh, I'm going to take you back to the basement again. H here's the problem, all right? So, the problem is this. When you're working with people, right, do you know if you're winning or not? Are, are we winning? Okay, so that was the question. That's the problem this next story kind of tries to solve. And, um, you know, back in the basement again, we were, um, uh, we used to get an email every single time somebody signed up for the product. So exciting times, right? So emails are coming in. And then pretty soon there's like 25 or 30 emails a day. And then there's like so many you don't know how many you had that day. And I found myself like searching like new system, yesterday's date, like counting them all up. And uh, we decided, you know, there's got to be a better way to do this. And so we created uh, what we call the daily drip. Okay, and it summarizes like what happened in the business yesterday. How many people signed up? How many people came paying customers? How much revenue? Da, 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 how much loss for a subscription business? So all, all that stuff. And, um, you know, there, there's, this is actually like a, like a pivotal point in, in the progression of the business. We could have decided like, 
you know, as owners, we're just going to hang on to that. And it'll be just us who kind of like knows. But instead, we went a, a different path. And um, we decided we're going to mail it to the, the whole company. And that daily drip still exists today. So everyone, their first day at FreshBooks, you know, they see like what happened yesterday. And uh, I've actually used that email. And so it's good because people have a drumbeat. They know what's going on. They speak with somebody on the phone. They can see like, oh, they signed up. That's pretty cool. Um, so transparent about, hey, how are we doing? What's the, what's the vibe of the business? And I've actually used that automated email and for years sent it to this uh, board member of ours. And the point is like, he would tell me for like years, the best part of his day was getting that email. Right? He'd wake up and he'd be like, and he'd call me up and be like, oh, things are going so well. Like, oh, this is exciting. And, uh, and I didn't have to like tell him like what was going on. It saved me so much explaining and communicating because he just kind of got this like drumbeat of information. Uh, and so what can you take away from that? I guess it's like, hey, we all work with people. Like sometimes like pushing information out can be a great way to sort of create transparency. And it may sound like a pain in the behind. I got to do the summary of this project, what's going on. But other people will really benefit if you, uh, if you take the time to do it. Please meet Jess. She is a, a support rock star uh, at FreshBooks. In fact, she's actually a manager of support rock stars, and uh, but she didn't start out that way. She's uh, done some things. And so um, this next thing I want to talk about is the problem of um, people have preconceived notions, and they come with their own mental model. And uh, you know, if you're starting out a project or something like this, like you've work to do to like actually get people lined up with what's important in this new context working with you, whatever you're doing. And so uh, in our case, um, fun fact, everybody at FreshBooks spends their first month in customer service. I mentioned we're crazy about customer service. We are, okay? You'll hear some more about that still. So uh, our CFO who joined last summer, uh, new CFO, public company CFO for 10 years, spent a month in customer service. Okay, so why do we do this? Uh, truth be told, we kind of fell into it, but we could have stopped a long time ago because it's like an expensive practice. Expensive kind of, I see as a great investment. Um, we do it because we want people to know our product matters, serving our customers matter, and our culture matters. And you learn all three of those things in that, that first month. Okay, and so I guess the question is if the problem, is, and people get kind of like semi brainwashed into how we do things, right? Which I guess is the like, how do we norm people on you know, how we think about things and what's important and that, that time, that like onboarding thing. I guess it's like the first part of a relationship, like what can you do to set expectations? That's one of the things we do. And if you want to create transparency and alignment, uh, it's something you might, uh, you know, I'm not sure it's that thing exactly. I'd say just think about you know, the, the, the time you spend with people when you begin a relationship as a way to kind of uh, set things up and be clear about what's important. A little background here. I don't know if you all know this, but in the 80s, Tylenol uh, had like, they, they actually had a bad batch in one area of the country that was making people sick. And what they decided to do um, was recall, they could have just, it was like in a region, it was isolated, and they could have just left it uh, there and taken those products off the shelf, but they decided to take like the whole country's Tylenol off the shelves for like three days and then and restock it, okay? And so what's the problem here uh, that we solve with a, a culture hack at, at FreshBooks? Just an example of an act that we performed that I think says something. Um, uh, I think the problem is this, is like, what if you possessed information that you were afraid others would know about. Like you were afraid of the consequences if they knew about it. What do you do? Okay. Um, in our case, the story went something like this. Back in the basement, okay, 2006. This time we have like, we're on to our second server, meaning we had one and it died and now we got a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very, this is back when, like, before there was, like, Amazon uh, web services and stuff like this. So we like, have a server. Uh, and we have lots of redundancy and backups and things with it. And it's, like, RAID controlled so no one hard drive can, you know, mess things up. But, you know, sure enough, what happens, um, that hard drive that's supposed to be doing all the redundancy, it kind of goes and gets messed up. And effectively, from midnight till noon on one day, we lost or had spotty information collection with our service. Okay. Um, now, for me, like data loss, given that we're managing people's finances, is like unacceptable, right? And so the question becomes, well, what do you do about it? Right? Just, 
to get a hold of those people that had the problem, let them know, and what have you. And what we decided to do was actually roll it back, grab the tapes and the data from 12 hours ago, you know, get that out there for folks, and then notify every single customer we had, whether they were impacted or not, plus anyone who'd ever tried our product, that this had happened. Hey, we're terribly sorry. We work really hard to make sure things like this don't happen, but it happened. Here's what we're doing about it. And by the way, what we did was we actually then went a step beyond and like not only uh, did stuff for the people who were impacted, uh, you know, uh, but also for everybody said, listen, if you're in a $19 package for managing 25 clients, you get 25 clients. If you've got 100 clients, you get 100 clients. We upped everybody's uh, packages or, uh, at the time. We didn't need to, okay? But we thought it was the right thing to do because we felt like we'd kind of let the side down. And so um, I guess, you know, what's the point is like, it, it was very well received, okay? People were like, wow, I can't believe you do this. Like, created a lot of trust, you know, with us and our customers. Also, our, our, our staff, right? Like, how do we behave if something bad happens? It's like, okay, like, you know, we can be forthright about things. Um, I, I guess, you know, so what is the lesson you can and take away from this is like, you know, you can turn lemons into lemonade, right? Like, scary bad information, like, there's, there's kind of always an opportunity if you, you know, like, you go forward with good intent and you think carefully about how the message can be received with people, uh, you know, it can work out well. It's just how you handle the, the sort of revealing of that information, how transparent you are, right? Okay, uh, we're going to do a couple of quick ones and then wind down. Um, everybody who joins FreshBooks, uh, we have, so, so uh, here's the problem. Uh, we have nine values at FreshBooks that sort of are about like, you know, character. And uh, we want everybody to sort of live those. And so the biggest part of that is uh, who you hire. And so everyone at FreshBooks is going to meet the, the founders during the interview process. We're like the last part of that process. And I made it to 150 and now Levi pretty much uh, uh, does them because it, it it's too crazy. I couldn't, I, I couldn't keep up with it. But uh, the point is um, we do this because our values matter. We want to show that to people. And it has an incredible effect because hiring managers and stuff like that are like, hey, uh, we better, you know, we got to meet, we, this matters because they're going to meet them later. And for uh, new folks joining the company, it's like, hey, like the culture of this place, like people really care about this. The founders are going to take time to meet me before you even join, uh, which, is, which is just a powerful, powerful thing. So I guess, you know, we're trying to be transparent about what matters, like our, our values matter. Um, and then, you know, what's the takeaway is like, hey, if you have something like that that's like very, very important, like what is the act that you're doing to spend your time on it to, to affect change? Um, transparency, offices. Uh, my office has two glass sides, right? Um, the, the problem is like, hey, uh, scary things happen behind closed doors, okay? So is there a way to be transparent so people don't worry, like, because you're out in the open all the time, right? And so actually, Mayor Bloomberg, I don't know if you all know this, but like he had like a bullpen pit, like he didn't have an office when he was mayor, supposedly. Uh, and, and that actually... Yeah, so, 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 I mean, this is kind of the same idea. It's like, I, I choose to be really present. I uh, found out about the Bloomberg thing after the fact. Uh, because I think it just leads people, like, if you're, like, constantly behind the scenes doing stuff, people wonder, like, what the heck's going on? So I think uh, literally being physically present is one of, the, one of the hacks we've used to create transparency, okay? Not sure it'll apply in your world, but just, you know, food for thought. After people leave support, how do you remind them that quality of service really matters? Fun fact. Uh, if you phone FreshBooks during the 12 hours that the lines are open, uh, and you don't, on the fourth ring, if no one's picked it up, every phone in the company rings. Okay? So, what does this say? This says, like, service matters, it's not just your first month. And we happen to be uniquely set up because everyone spent that first month to, like, support people. Uh, but, you know, like, culture, service, quality of service really, really matter. All right? So, little hack that keeps reinforcing that message. The phone, and, and by the way, the team who like lets the phone ring like all the way to things, they're, they're like, we don't want that to happen, right? So they're, they're working on it. Um, okay, and so here, here, here's my final thing. Um, when we got to about 200 people, I tried to find ways to, uh, like I had made it to 150 interviewing everybody, find ways to stay uh, connected. Um, 
one of the things we do is have this weekly shorthands meeting. We bring lunch in for everybody and, uh, and feed them. And at the end of it, we have a Q&A. So a Q&A is a great way to create transparency and ask questions, you know, just like, because we're going to do it in a second, and it's like, you're going to throw stuff at me, and I have no idea what you're going to say in advance, and uh, that'll be fun. Um, the, uh, uh, so the point is, with all this stuff, been, like these are all things that we're constantly doing to improve transparency, availability. Uh, despite all these efforts, all right, uh, we run an annual survey every year called the Fresh Booker Census. And in there, there's an open-ended question. If you could send one message to the executive team, what would it be? Uh, you ready for this? We would like more transparency. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I should be surprised, but, uh, but, but, but I, I kind of was. And so, you know, the latest thing that we're doing on that is now it's like, okay, like, after a board meeting, let's summarize what was discussed there and just get that information out so you're not wondering, because that can be like a, a scary thing. Uh, anyway, so uh, the point is, hey folks, it's a process, okay? It never ends. I, I believe that creating transparency for those around you is something that w makes the world a little better. Uh, and so my uh, leave behind for you all is, hey, is, is there some small act or gesture you can do today to create a little more transparency for someone in you life, your life so that collectively we can all make the world a little bit better today. Thank you.